the um that's right hi how are you doing girl you have insomnia watch my videos and you will not have insomnia anymore all right so today we're talking about the killer williams mobile app before we do this i have a um something between a pet peeve and a rant i don't know which which it is and i'm I, i'm not going to pick on anybody in particular maybe opie because she can handle it but um uh, let me see if I can find something here. Red day. Here we go. All right. That's not exactly what I was looking for. Miss Jerry, do you mind if I pick on you? <laughs> do you mind? All right. So I don't want anybody to feel bad. But um, I don't want to pick on Jerry. He'll get mad at me. <laughs> uh, let me just uh, let me just do something. All right, so um, I'll do it because I don't want. <laughs> I can live with that. So food drive. Let's see if this is what I'm looking for. It's the same one. Now I need rubber demands. I don't want you to see that. Protect your accounts from phishing. So this is something that said that we were getting phishing accounts. Having difficulty finding what I was looking for, out of office, RE printing, let's see if this shows up. All right, here we go. So, first of all, this one is better than most. But I get emails from real estate agents all the time, often, like practically every day, every other day. And they have the Keller Williams looks really nice email signature, right? Um, which I have to say really pisses me off. I, I just want to, I just want to share that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because how do most people read email? On what kind of a device do people read email? Most of the time. Cell phone. Cell phone. So now Opie has gone to the trouble of putting in her phone number and her email address. But 90% of the real estate agents who send me email have not done that. Which means that, first of all, does this look really good on a cell phone? How, how big is this image on a cell phone? Not very big. Now, by the way, this computer that I'm using right now has a touch screen, just like a cell phone. And it's also got built-in software to make phone calls. In other words, it would make a phone call. So I'm going to call Opie, and so I'm, I, well, that's what happens, right? And the reason I can't call her is because it's an image. So what I get often is an email from an agent that says, call me when you have a moment. They have something that looks like this at the bottom of their email, and I have my cell phone, and I can't call them because the phone number is part of an image. I can't go to their website. I can't call them. There's one company that was sending me emails. They had Skype. I have Skype, but the Skype was part of their image. You click it. Skype does not launch because it's part of an image. They had their phone number. You tap the phone number. It doesn't dial the phone number because it's part of an image. Um, their website, you tap the website. Nothing happens because it's an image. And I ask, why? why? Why would you do that, right? Do you understand? Now, if you like the image, and I have agents say, I really like this. It looks really nice. On my big screen computer or laptop, it looks really cool, and so I want that. Well, if that's what you want, go ahead, but you should at the very least put in your phone number, right? At the very least. Now, just to show you what my... I'm not saying that this is perfect. It's related, by the way, to the mobile app. So this is what my email signature looks like. And it's slow. There's actually a picture there. So first of all, you understand that if somebody types on that, it's a hyperlink. See, my, my computer has software that reads phone numbers and links. That's a hyperlink. If I tap it, it'll dial the phone number. 
goes to the web page, goes to the email. I put in my picture and the Keller Williams logo, which by the way will realign if somebody's looking at it on a small screen, whereas the big image will not. Do you understand how that big image looks on a phone that size? Right. Do you understand? Can you read the phone number? You better because you have no way of calling them unless you can read the phone number, which is now part of an image that is this big on the phone. Now you can make it bigger, you can make it bigger, but why would we go, why would we make it so difficult for clients to call us? That's my question. Why? Do you understand you have to make it bigger, make it bigger, bigger, get out a pen unless you've got a really good memory, find a piece of scratch paper, write down the phone number, then you can open up your phone and you can type in the phone number to call them back. I ask, why don't you put your phone number in your email signature so people can just call you back, right? This is my, by the way, as we go through, my medication, by the way, will kick in in a few minutes <laughs> and, and, and it'll be, It'll be calm and peaceful by the time we're done. But know that we're, we are talking about the mobile app. This is what's at the bottom of my email signature. Find your dream home. You click on that and it goes to, I'm actually using a program called Real Scout, which notice it will pop open. So what I would suggest that you do is, it's hard, you can't have Real Scout, I'm sorry. But, um, but, but you should have it go to your Keller Williams website search page, right? I have a cool one because I'm special. Um, but uh, instant valuation of your home, this actually is a link to Cloud CMA, which is a CMA program I pay 30 some dollars a month for, and it'll draw in a second, but it's going to have a nice picture in the background. How much is your home worth? It will. It's spinning. This is what it looks like. People put in their property address. They click on locate property. They get a CMA instantly telling them what's been selling in their neighborhood. By the way, they've also given me their email address. They're asked for a phone number. I also know their address. Uh, what else is on my email signature? Uh, download the best mobile app in real estate. It's about time. We talked about the mobile app, and so when people click on that, they go to their mobile app download page, my mobile app download page. Now, what you're going to want is you're going to want to have a real email signature. And a real email signature is not the image, but a series of, of useful links that people could click on. Now, the you have one of these already if you're a Keller Williams agent, and I'm going to show you how to find it. The system is smart enough to know, notice it says enter my mobile number, it's smart enough to know that I'm not using a mobile device right now. If I were going to the download page using a Apple, an iOS, an iPad, or an iPhone, it would be giving me a link to iTunes. If I were going there with an Android device, it's smart enough to know I have an Android device, it'll tell me how to get to Google Play. If you're going there on a BlackBerry or a Windows phone, you'll get a message that says, loser, go get a new phone. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding right? But, but it won't work, right? You understand? Because you have a BlackBerry, right? You understand? It's not going to work. So, with the, so is this, and by the way, I have, could this be useful? Because the reason for us having a mobile app is to get more business. Does everybody understand that? That's the reason for having a mobile app. If I had a laptop at an open house and I had this open, could I send the link to people by typing in their mobile phone number, right? There's actually another way of doing it. And so what else do I have here? Uh, I also have a link for people that are interested in finding out about getting a real estate license. And we'll talk about that later. I'm going to be doing a class probably next month called Pursuit of Profit Share, which is going to be about how to build a profit share tree and to recruit people. And we'll talk about, there's a, a site where you could do that too. 
All right. Was that uh, was that okay? Was that that was was that too bad? Just uh, no. All right. <laughs> so um, let's talk about your mobile app. Why is this important? What worries Google? Do you understand that even the people at Google are worried? All right. Do you know what worries Google more than just about anything? If anything worries Google. What worries Google is our mobile apps. So how many of you have a Flickster on your phone? How old are you people? All right, let's see. How about Fandango? Anybody, we, got, we got one. So what, what's Fandango? Anybody? You got time? It's okay to admit that you have a movie app on your phone. <laughs> so, so Jay, you have Fandango, and, and how do you use it? It's on your phone. Yeah. So if you're wanting to see a movie, yes, sir. do you pick the near theater or the movie or whatever? Right. Like just... So what what and Flickster, by the way, is just a, a better version of Fandango. I'm just saying. So if I'm interested in going to a movie, am I going to go to Google? Let's say first of all, do you understand? I probably I may not have my laptop with me. Right, but I have my phone. Isn't that right? Do you understand that if you sleep with your phone, you have a problem? Do you understand that? I just thought I would share, just, just, just an opinion. If you have anxiety, if you can't find your phone. So anyhow, we all have our phones. So if I want to go to a movie, am I going to open up a browser, go to Google, do a search, movies in Santa Clara, or would you go to Fandango, which knows where you are? Yeah. Is that right? Knows where you are. It'll start showing you all the movies that are around where you are. And you can, can you buy tickets? Yes, you can. You can buy tickets, right? So when you show up, you, you have your favorites and all everything. Yeah. Right. You have your favorites. <laughs> it, 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 it'll remain. Yeah. Right. Is it? Did you understand why that bothers Google? Because yeah. people aren't going to Google and searching for movies. Right. By the way, um, this year it began. The we began the year. It actually happened, I think, a few months before the end of last year, where more people were searching for homes on mobile devices than were searching for homes using desktop computers. Right. Do you understand? More people are searching for homes on mobile devices than are searching for homes using laptops or desktop computers. Now, you're, you can either ignore that or have a mobile device you could give to people to search for homes. Does, that, does everybody understand? Those are the two choices. Now, I used to be at a, another company for a long time, and they had a mobile app, too. Let me just find, I have lots of people's logins. So they had a mobile app, too. It was Century 21. They had a mobile app. I remember one year, the Super Bowl. Century 21 ran an ad, and the ad was about the mobile app. And isn't that cool? On the Super Bowl, really expensive ad on the mobile app. Do you know how many mobile apps Century 21 has? They have one mobile app. So let's say you're a client, and I'm at Century 21, and I said, you ought to check out the Century 21 mobile app. Did you see the ad at the Super Bowl? It's a really cool app. Why don't you download it? So you've downloaded the Century 21 mobile app. And you're looking at homes, and you find a home you want to see, and you tap on, I want to make an appointment to see the home. You understand there's no connection between me and that app. Right? I gave you the app. I told you how to get the app, but there's no connection between me and the app. I actually happen to know the company that owns Century 21, owns Global Banker, owns Better Homes and Gardens, owns ERA, and owns Sotheby's. And I happen to know what happens to that lead. It goes to New Jersey. You're not kidding. Or Sippany, New Jersey, to a router. It's called the lead router. And then lead router routes the lead back to a Century 21 office, geographically located near where the person was when they tapped on it. Could that be not my Century 21 office? Now it comes to the Century 21 office, and the Century 21 office is going to give the lead to whoever they want to. Now, if you're a brand new agent, do you understand they might want to give the lead to the top agent so they don't leave and they stay at the office rather than give it to you? 
So the, uh, the chances of you, if you share the Century 21 mobile app, the chances of you actually getting business as a result of that are really, really slim. Right? Does everybody, does there, you get there. The Keller Williams mobile app is branded to you. Keller Williams does not have a router in Austin for leads. One of Gary Keller's tenants is that we stand behind our agents and not in front of them, right? So Keller Williams is not trying to get between you and the lead, which means your mobile app is branded to you. It's got your name, your phone number. If you share it with somebody and they tap on a home and say, I'd like to make an appointment to see this home, you get the lead, right? You understand? It doesn't go to, there's no one else for it to go to. Could that be a useful thing, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to first of all show you where is your mobile app, how to download your mobile app, how to get your download page. We'll talk about ways of marketing your mobile app. We'll talk about ways of enhancing your mobile app. And um, we'll be done by about 4 o'clock. <laughs> uh, actually, it won't take that long. So here we are logged in to Keller Williams. If you go to technology, Notice the third from the top is called Mobile App Resources. They, by the way, if you're new to Keller Williams and you're, you're like, I don't understand what's going on here, most of the good stuff is in the eEdge control panel, right? The eEdge control panel is where leads come in, where you can deal with contacts, listings, messages, transactions. We don't, we don't use my transactions, but uh, some offices do. Action plans, I'll do a class on that someday when I'm really bored. And across the top, those black and white headings refer to resources or learning. All right, this is where you do stuff in the control panel. This is where you learn how to do stuff. So, and by the way, I've, I've noticed over the years, I know I sound cynical, do I sound cynical at times? It's, so people could, that a, a, lot, a lot of real estate agents lack curiosity, right? I don't know why. But by curiosity, I would mean, why don't you hover over each one of these and, like, look at what's there. But we're going to do technology, mobile app resources, and download the Keller Williams mobile app. So the first thing you ought to do, and by the way, it's easier to do this from your page rather than doing it here. What I mean by that is that it's possible for you to go to the uh, iPad, the iTunes, or Google Play. You can go to the App Store or to Google Play and download the app and then brand it to you. It's a whole lot easier to use your mobile app download page because then you don't have to find yourself, which for some of us would be a good thing to do. But um, you don't have to do that. <laughs> You just have to download the app from your page. If you download the app from your page, it's already branded to you. But uh, I get complaints. Somebody was sending me screenshots of their app last night. And so I want to cover why, what they didn't like. Brand it. So notice it says how to download it, how to brand it, and how to share it. And notice there's a button, and it will say... Share your app on Facebook, Twitter, email, or text. We're going to talk about how to do that. There's a video. What happened? Come back, back, come back. What's... I hope you can see that, too. There's a video here on the Keller Williams YouTube channel. That's a Keller Williams head of technology explaining how the mobile app works. I would watch it. Your app listings, your leads. There's agent checklists. Right, which isn't that complicated, but I'm opening it up for you, and it basically says how to prepare your mobile app. All right, we're going to go through that leadership checklist, how to promote your app, how to download, view your mobile download web address. All right now, I'm going to click on that. Um, I'm going to open a new tab because stop, just stay where you are. I'm going to open a new tab. So this eventually is going to show my mobile address. And the internet is slow right now. All right. Uh, let's just go on. Share your app through eEdge My Marketing. We're actually going to do that. I'm going to send an email to people. 
in real time marketing the mobile app. Just to show you, we've done scripts to use with consumers. Wow. There, aren't, there aren't very many. Frequently asked questions. This is the, all right, notice what happened. This is what you get when you click on the view your mobile download web address. So this, by the way, of that whole long list is probably the most important place to start. Everybody see that? Agents promote your app, view your mobile app download web address, and what pops up is this screen. And this screen is part of a system called the e-agency website administration tool, which is sometimes difficult to find unless you know how the system works. So if you go to, to technology mobile app, you click on view my, my mobile app page, you're going to see this. Now what it's going to probably look like when you're first there is something that looks like this. All right, that's what you're going to see. Now what you're going to do is you're going to click on where it says none and pick your office. I'm special and have multiple offices. You probably will not, right? You understand? So you're not going to be given like eight choices. You'll pick one. Now, also notice down here it says mobile app service area. If you don't put anything in there, the default setting is the city of the office you work at. So a company, an office I used to work at was in Campbell. Now, I was going to Keller Williams events all around the United States, and the most common question, people would come, they'd look at me, they'd look at my name badge, and guess what they would ask? Where's Campbell? Right? You, you know, I mean, that's what, that, you know, where, where is that, right? And, and you understand, could that be a problem if you're talking to somebody in Milpitas or Gilroy, and it says Santa Clara, right? Do you understand? So my suggestion, you can do what you want, so I would put in Silicon Valley. Now, I've had people say, well, I, I, I don't care about the East Bay is okay. San Francisco Bay Area, fine, put in San Francisco Bay Area. I've had people say, Northern, go ahead, put in, oh, what do I care, right? You understand? You're limited to how many characters you can put. But my suggestion for us down here in Silicon Valley, if you're up in Santa Rosa, wine country, whatever you want, you're going to send, use something that describes the general area you're in. Otherwise, it's only going to say the name of the office, city that you're at, right, which you might find limited. This URL is important. What you're going to do is copy it. And I'm, I'm glad to see everybody brought their computer. I'm just so anyway, I'm going to record this, but you want to copy it, and you'll see why later. Mobile text code, you probably won't ever use that. My agent code, you probably won't ever use that. QR codes, I doubt you're going to use that. How many of you have a QR code reader on your cell phone? All right. Now, a few people raise their hands. Geeks. Why not? <laughs> why not? See, most people do not, and the reason they don't is because neither Android or Apple phones come with one, right? There's no native QR code reader that comes with the phone. So if they don't have one, and by the way, I've seen statistics that say less than 5% of people with cell phones have a QR code reader. Back a long time ago, everybody thought, oh, this would be... Does anyone know what QR stands for in QR code? And you call yourselves geeks. <laughs> right? You think you're... It stands for quick response. Right? When it first came out, everyone thought, this will be wonderful. This is going to be wonderful. Right? And most people... So is it a problem if you rely on this and you're at an open house and the people don't have a QR code reader? So you say to them, okay, first you got to go to the App Store and find a QR code reader. Then download the QR code reader, install it on your phone. When you're done with that, then take a picture of my QR code. And then you're going to get a link, because QR codes generally send text links, mostly. 
um, and you'll get a link and you can put it on, on, on and now you can download it. Well, that, that's way too much. By the way, if you've got business cards, people say, well, should I have a QR code on my business card? If you're going to do that, have a QR code, not necessarily for this, but have one for your contact information, right? Because you understand that's a useful thing. Because if I have a QR code reader and you have a contact information QR code on your business card, I can take a picture of it and it'll take all of your contact information and put it into my cell phone, which synchronizes with Google, so I don't have to take a picture of your card and use cam card or some other application to do optical character recognition, which gets about 80% right, and then manually go in and fix stuff. Right, so if you're going to have a QR, so I've seen agents that have both this one and the other one because they figure if you've got a QR code reader, but but that's not such a big. You're going to see that's not the easiest way to share it. Um, this button says, which you should click, send mobile visitors to my personal mobile app downloader page. This is only if people are going to an e-agency website, which most of you don't know that you have or what it is or how to find it. So nobody is going there anyhow. So this would send people directly to your mobile app download page. Uh, this month, there's going to be new websites for agents, which I'm going to do a class on. So has everybody copied that link? The other thing you're going to want to do is go over here to edit agent team information, go down to edit contact information. So the what I got um, was the complaint I received last night, which was a screenshot of somebody's mobile app, was that there were two of the same phone numbers on their mobile app. And one phone number had dashes, and the other phone number was just a string of numbers. And so the question I was being asked is, why does my mobile app have my phone number twice, once with dashes and once not with dashes? It looks terrible. Make it go away make it go away and this is why this is why right so if you is everybody with me edit contact information look at the phone numbers look at them this page is where they pull stuff and i just happen to notice it's got the wrong address from my office i've been to most i've been to many offices how about that so um uh, don't judge me I give lasting satisfaction because they don't want me to come back. Um, and there's mortgage. We, we don't really need to worry about this, but the big part here is you might want to look at it and see if there's anything here that you don't, that you'd like to change. Um, it's not letting me change my, put in my GRI, but click on save when you're, when you're happy or at least not too sad about it. And so do you understand what I'm saying now? I actually, both of these numbers, I'm actually a proponent of having one phone number. I, I think it's really old fashioned when the real estate agent has a toll free number, a uh, direct line number, a mobile phone number. You know, I mean, really, you know, why don't you just tell me the phone number you want me to call? I actually had a, an agent call me the other day and I said, is this your cell phone? She said, no, this is from the phone on my desk. And I was like, you have a phone on your desk? Are you kidding me? And you're calling people with it? Why would you do that? Don't judge. I don't, don't judge. You know, I don't know. Why would you do that? I don't know. So I, and by the way, both of these ring on my phone, so I don't really care. But you do, does you understand? You want to make sure. And, and by the way, if you say, well, I only want to use my cell phone number, this is what I would do is I would put, notice phone is required, cell phone is not. It's not going to say cell phone or phone, it's just going to have the number. So if you only want to use your cell phone number, put it, this seems counterintuitive, not where cell phone is, but put it where phone is and leave the other one blank. All right, so I don't know if I copied this, so I'm going to go back to, see, I'm lost. Where did it go? Oh, my gosh. What would you? What happened to the download page? It's under 4.0 and 4.5. But what you're going to want to do is re you're going to want this. Does everybody understand that? You're going to want that. Why would we want that link? That's correct. 
we're going to put it in our email signature. Why else might we want the link? Right again, we might put it on our website and tell people to put it. What else could we do with the link? Well, you guys are doing really well. Um, we could go to, and you've heard of Facebook, and one of the things that we could do, and there's other ways of doing it, we could actually, in Facebook, paste in that link and see what happens. Wait for it, wait for it, come on, wait for it. Uh, we'll get to that, there we go. Notice what happens is it puts out Michael Devlin's Real Estate Search mobile app. See, isn't that cool? And I said, uh, and I'm gonna say something. So we're now doing, we're, we're doing marketing, right? Um, this is the best uh, mobile app in real estate. Download it and I don't know. Uh, how, about, I don't know. how about that? Download, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to click on post. Now, if I were serial, I mean serious about this, I would go to my, uh, one. I, I have a page. You can see I actually manage a whole bunch of real estate agent pages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my business page, because this can only be done on a business page. I'm now pasting that beautiful link in. This pops up um, the best Mobile M O B I L M O B. Don't don't laugh at me. Mobile app in real estate uh, over four million homes in the palm of your hand. Do you know why I'm saying over four million homes? Are there four million homes in our MLS? It works everywhere. Are you a member of the Bay East MLS? No. You go there, it'll work. You go to Phoenix, you can find homes. Texas, you can find homes. It works wherever Keller Williams is, which is everywhere. So now notice this. My, now what I'm going to do is publish it. But because I want to market, I'm going to click on boost post. And I'm going to, you're going to watch me spend some money. <laughs> Santa Clara County, I've already saved this. Um, I'm not going to, this one I'm not going to do $230 because I'm cheaper than that. So <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do $30 and I'm going to click on boost. And right now, my mobile app is being promoted on Facebook. Now, you can't boost a post if it's on your personal profile because you're not supposed to be using your personal profile for business purposes. So why do you want to boost your post? Right? You know what I'm saying? But if you post it on a business page, you can boost the post. By the way, I could run an ad in Facebook. Clicks to website. What website would I want them to be clicking to? My mobile app. Would it be nice to have a cool picture of the Keller Williams mobile app? Let me, let me move this down here. A cool picture of the Keller Williams mobile app. So I'm going to type in KW mobile app. All right, so I'm going to type that in. And now I'm going to go over here to images. And what I'm going to find is a whole bunch of images of the Keller Williams mobile app. And if you've never stolen, I mean, uh, uh, researched images using Google images, if you go to search and you pick medium or size, how about this? I'm going to pick medium. And so here are a whole bunch of images that are relatively high resolution. Notice one of them has a whole bunch of the app features on it. So I now have an image that I could use on a mobile, do you want me to run an ad from, what, how about this? You guys look like you're a curious group. So we're going to go here and we're going to go to ads, create ads. 
And I actually manage a bunch of ads for real estate agents. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, send people to your website. That's the kind of ad I want to run. By the way, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to pick one of these. And I'm going to pick, how about that one? Let me see which one looks really cool. Um, Map-based search at the time. That one I don't want because another agent's already branded it. And you got to be careful. We built one for every agent as sort of a recruiting thing. Um, here, let me just pick this one, medium size. Gra find your phone, grab your home, download the app. I don't want to do that one. How about this map-based search at the zip of a finger? All right, that one is, this is actually one of the cool things about the mobile app is that you can pull up a map and you can, on your finger, draw a where you're, and it will. So I'm going to borrow this image. I'm going to borrow the image. I'm going to download it to my folder that says mobile app resources. I'm going to go back here to ads and it wants the URL. Remember that URL I told you to hang on to? So I'm, I'm picking that URL and it's, and I'm going to go here to set audience and budget. And I'm not, I really want to, by the way, if you do it outside of your MLS, you lose some of the branding. So you want to stick to your mobile your area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a location. I happen to live in a town called Morgan Hillbilly, I mean Hill, California. And 25 miles is the default setting, which by the way, our MLS probably includes the people that are 18 can't buy a house unless they are, uh, work for Google or Facebook. I don't really care about any of this other stuff. My budget's going to be $20. I want clicks to the website. I'm going to pick choose ad creative. All right, I'm recording this. Or oh, by the way, do you understand if you wanted to know about how to run Facebook ads for realtors, do you know how you would find that? You'd go to Google and type in how do I run Facebook ads for real estate. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick an image. By the way, did you know? that Facebook has their own stock images. Did you, did you know that? By the way, it's also taken a peek at my website and found an image. But what I'm going to do is I remember that one that we bar, uh, stole from whoever did it. We're uploading that image. And there it is. It may not like that image because it doesn't like images with too much text in them. And I have, this is going to look really weird, but these are all the pages that I uh, manage for somebody or other. So I'm going to do this. And then I would type in, I'm not going to, I, I would rather think about it, but I would type in words for a headline. You don't get a lot of them. How about best mobile app in real estate? Now, they may not like that picture because they're fussy about too much text, right? And then down here, I would do that. I could, under advanced options, put in more information about why this is a cool app. And I'm, they're probably going to reject it because it's got too many pictures. Let me pick, um, here's this one that's nice. Is that nice? Doesn't you think that's nice? We're going to steal, I mean, borrow that one too. And then we're going to go back here. And I'm going to go back up to wherever the picture is. I'm going to add another one. I've been, I feel if, if Facebook has not rejected your ad a couple of times, you're not trying hard enough. And so it's going to probably like that one better. All right, so I'm going to notice it's given me this image uses the wrong aspect ratio, but it will still run on Facebook. A lot of times it says it won't run on Instagram. I don't really care about that. Uh, I'm not going to write in all this stuff right now, but I'm going to place the order because it's going to allow me to change it later, and they're going to review it because they probably won't like it. But what I've now done is I've run a mobile, I run a Facebook ad for my mobile app, two of them. One of them was a post which I posted on my business page. 
and boost it. That one was really easy to do. The other one was an actual ad, right? And the ads show up on mobile devices. Mm -hmm. By the way, I could, I should have done this, but I, I could, I will fix this after I'm done with this class. You can choose in Facebook ad settings, you only want the ad to run on mobile devices. Does, that not, does everybody understand that if my ad is for a mobile app, I only might want people with mobile apps running mobile devices to see it, right? But my computer knows if, I, if I'm clicking on, my computer knows if I'm clicking on an app to send it to my phone. So was that, wasn't that just fun? Wasn't that fun? No, I don't think so. So, uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do, uh, how much is your home worth? I've done all this. Mobile property. So, um, one, this is a weird thing, and I don't really know how to, how to get around it, but we want to get back to, oh, here we go. See, now, if you're, if you're ever lost on Keller Williams, which I oftentimes mm -hmm. are, you click on the My KW button in the top left, and it will take you back to the front page. So we've, um, does everybody understand how to put a link in your signature? Does that, does everybody understand if you have an email program, how to put a link in your signature? Yes. The hard part is putting a link in your signature on your cell phone. Now, if you're using Google and Gmail, you might assume that if in Gmail on your computer you put in a really cool email signature that if you send somebody an email using your cell phone Gmail app that it's going to have the signature, but you would be wrong. It doesn't work. And so what you have to do is put your signature in your cell phone itself. Now, if you're using an iPhone, I would suggest you go ahead and add the Gmail app rather than just using your iPhone email. The reason is, is that you could then on a real computer see all of the emails you've sent. Right? Do you understand? But if you're sending and receiving emails using your iPhone email client, that's not going to work so well. But if you're using the Gmail, it at least will include the ones you've sent. Now, there is a difference. The concept is the same for both the iPhone and the Android, but the way you would get it onto your phone, first of all, let me just say, if you Google searched, how do I change my email signature on my iPhone, guess what you're going to find? Videos on how to do this. But what I do is I create the signature. I'm up to 55 emails. Hi, Angelica. Later, later. Um, I create the email signatures using Google Drive. Um, so, and I, I do it with Google Drive sig and a t signature. So here's a good looking email signature. Um, I hope so. Maybe this is one I didn't finish. Is it still spinning around? Signature Angelica is a nice, she's sending me emails. So Angelica wanted to keep her, she wanted that. So I, I don't care. Um, but notice it had all this other stuff. So what you would do is, um, this is where I make email signatures, then I just copy and paste it into Gmail. What you do is you take you the email signature, once you get it looking the way you want to, you copy it all of this, and you write an email to yourself, and you paste it in the body. Then you open your cell phone, you find the email you just sent to yourself, you open it up, now it's got your signature, you copy and paste the text using your cell phone, then you go to settings, and you go to your email signature, and then you paste your email signature that you saved into that place and hit save and you now have an email signature on your cell phone. Did that? Yeah. How do you generate a black box? The black, this one is done, 
Raul will, would make you one of those if you wanted to. I don't use them because I just, uh, I, I don't use that. Uh, I actually have the templates. Yeah, just, just like you said, I mean, it looks really nice, but it's just an image. So if anybody wants to get to you, you can't click on it. If they click on it, just the image expands. Them. So th this is one I made for Madhu, and I put her picture and I put the logo. I put the logo next to the picture, so at least it has a logo. Notice, notice the similarity of the links to my signature. Mostly the ones that I do look a lot like mine. By the way, if it was on a small phone like that, it would rearrange it so that the KW is under the picture. Right? In other words, it just it would rearrange it because those are two separate images. I believe you ought to consider how people are going to be reading your email and structure your email signature so that it works best. And that big box does not work well. Did everybody get that though? You make your signature. I like Google Drive because it's good with links and things like that. Make your signature, copy it, email it to yourself, copy it on your phone, go into your settings and paste it in. All right, so, but I promised more than that, didn't I? So what else are we going to do? Um, remember, we're back here. We're going to send somebody we're, a couple of things we need to do in order to market. One of the things we need to do is we click on, see where it says my marketing, the little plus sign? You click on that. See this, this by the way, is where all the really good stuff is. First, I said that the control panel is where the good stuff is. My marketing plus sign is where the really good stuff is. Because this is where you can create marketing materials. Now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to click on Create Marketing Materials. And we're going to wait for it to spin and spin and spin. And then we're going to fix your account. By the way, sometimes when I do this class, I've had people, once they realize what I do in the class, I've actually had people offer me money if I would log in with their account to demonstrate how to fix the account. I've had people say, hey, 20 bucks, just log in. Here's my, here's my username and password. Just do it, okay? So I just want you to know I can be bought. I just, just in case you were wondering, <laughs> if, if you're thinking, gee, could I just like pay this guy and have him just do it for me? The answer is, yeah, we'll talk to me afterwards. I take, uh, I have a PayPal account. I can send you. So over here, you can't see it because of my go to, you know, wherever is up here. We see where it says hi next to my picture and a little drop down. We're going to click on that. And what we're going to do is go to my account. And notice my account, by the way, you ought to look at this. If there's anything here you don't like, you ought to click on edit and change it. Notice under phone numbers, I only have one phone number. That's obviously a cell phone because I only want really one phone number. Right, that's a, a Google Voice number. Uh, marketing website, if you want something to appear other than your KW Realty site, right, MikeDevlin.KW, you put it in here. Now, actually, that's a domain. This is another conversation that I registered with GoDaddy or someplace that is forwarded to my KW Realty site because I, I don't know. Um, these are disclaimers. Notice down here, this is mobile app. Does everybody see that? Your default setting has a generic app code in it. What that means is, is that if you send marketing emails to people, they will not be linked to your download page unless you put in, remember that thing I told you to copy? Remember that link? Remember that one? Unless you copy and put it in here, what, what happens in marketing materials, it'll say at the bottom, download my mobile app, but it doesn't download your mobile app. It downloads a generic mobile app, and then they have to find you and put you into the mobile app. So you want to put in your mobile app download page there. All right. Did already get that? Mm, 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 mm. And we're going to click on save. By the way, you could add social media. I don't know if this is one of the ones where I've added social media. So you could do, 
Does anybody really use dig anymore? I mean, really. I mean, you know. But there's, uh, but anyhow, we are, that's another class. I'm going to be doing a series, I guess, uh, on Keller Williams technology because most people aren't using it. So uh, anyhow, by the way, just one thought about this. If you have your own logo that's cool, upload it. Don't upload a Keller Williams logo under marketing logo because they will put a Keller Williams logo on everything anyhow, which means if you upload a Keller Williams logo, you're going to have two Keller Williams logos on everything you do, which is sort of what we're doing. But one of the things that Keller Williams does is it allows you to have your own logo, so you can have your own logo. And the difference between these two, although they look a lot alike, is one is for the website, which is generally a lower resolution, and this one is what prints on marketing materials, which should be higher resolution. And if you have, if your picture is under 100 kilobytes, it's not going to look good when it comes out on the printer. Just, you know. And so what agents often tell me, they say, well, this is the only picture that I like. Right, you know, I only like, and it's like 20 kilobytes. It's all pixelated, but it's the one I like. And one I, by the way, get, does anybody know how to fix that? You go to, there's this website that I use of high-end graphic artists. It's called Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -E and Fiverr is a website where there are people that will do stuff for $5. And there's a bunch of people on that website that, you understand, if you have the right software, this takes like a minute. You send them your little tiny picture, and they will make it a big picture and fill in all of the pixelation so that you now have a, a thousand dot per inch picture that you could now upload as a marketing picture, and it's going to look much better when it prints out. This is if you're too cheap, I mean too thrifty, to go get a new picture taken that's a high resolution picture. Just thought I would share that because I don't want people always write me. So let's do more marketing. Does that sound like fun? We're here under market my listings. How about here create marketing? What there's campaigns and a marketing center. And there is a mobile app campaign. Did you know that that there's a mobile app campaign? And where would we find this? We'd go under campaigns. I'm going to be talking about 8 by 8s and 12 directs and 33 touches and campaigns. If you want to get the kind of results that the millionaire real estate agents are getting, you need to have a campaign. Rather than doing a campaign, I'm going to do just a marketing piece using the mobile app. Now, I clicked on, I, did everybody see I clicked on marketing and email marketing? Did everybody see where I'm? Let me just make sure I didn't lose anybody. I went to Create Marketing, Marketing Center. I'm going to do email marketing because I'm cheap. I'm a cheap real estate agent, and I, and I don't want to spend money on postcards. Plus, this one is something I want them to download, so email would be better. And HTML and image base. Um, I'm going to click on – let me just see what happens. Does anybody know what the difference is between those two? I asked a guy once what if he knew what HTML stood for, and he said, yeah, Hotmail. Does <laughs> <laughs> that what it stands for, HTML? Mm -hmm. um, so here are, I clicked on mobile. I, notice I typed in the word mobile, and if I'm, I'm going to unclick image base, all of these are HTML. All right, and HTML, of course, stands for hypertext markup language, what it really means is it will look better on the cell phone, right? It'll readjust dimensions so it looks good on different devices, whereas an image is like the email signature, right? Did I say it was a good thing to send big images to people on their cell phone? No. So HTML, these are all the different mobile apps. So how about this one? Download my mobile app today. How about that? So I'm going to click on personalize because I want to see what it looks like. And here's a picture. Here's stuff. My app. Download my mobile app. Now, if I click on this, what, I, what I'm going to do is I could change the image if I wanted to. But notice up here it has links. 
And uh, what I want to do, if I click on insert or edit, notice the reason I'm doing that is because I'm paranoid. And I want to see that it's got my download page link there. Now mine does because I went and changed it in my about me stuff, right? In my profile. So it's got mine. If yours, if what you have doesn't end in something that looks funny like this, you have the wrong one. I think this is the right one. What happens did I see? Is that the same one? I don't know. I'm pasting mine in because I want to be sure. Maybe it didn't put in the right one. But anyhow, just to make sure, I click on this, I scroll up, I click on link. It actually does look like it's a different one. And I paste it in mine. So forget all that stuff that I said that because I put it there, it works. I paste it in my link, which is a good thing. I'm going to click on OK. Notice it has my stuff down there. See, they put a Teller Williams logo. Now, what real estate agents generally want to do is they want to edit this. Do you know why they want to edit it? Because the phone number is not anywhere near big enough. Isn't that right? Usually, real estate agents want their phone number bigger and their name bigger. So I've done that, but these links should work. So if I click on that, anyhow, that, that link here, download my mobile app, is the one that it pulls from your profile. So now that I've done this uh, and I'm happy with it, I go up here to save and download my mobile app today. I'm not going to change the title. You can't break the template. They won't let you modify the template. What you end up is something that you saved. So I'm going to now exit this. And now that I've done, look at this, publish to the web and share. Really? See this link? This is a link to this piece, and it's HTML, which means that the button works. Right? When somebody clicks on download, they go to my download page. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, Google Plus, anyhow, Pinterest, and AR stands for only Jerry would have an idea. What's AR stand for? Army Reserves. Army Reserves, very good. And it also stands for Active Rain. Active Rain. <laughs> Active Rain is a real estate agent blogging platform. Last time I call on you. That's all I can say. So is that cool that I have this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Compose Email and download my mobile app today. And if I click on Two, it's going to show me all the people I have. I have lots of groups of people. Lots of groups of people. And so just to mess, should I just mess with people? So I'm going to, here's different coaching groups, former students. I don't know how many people I have in that group. Um, how many people? And so, by the way, I, I, you can see I'm an underachiever. I have 5,429 contacts. So once I've clicked on a group, if you hit the tab, it'll pop over and it shows me 11 people. Right, I haven't really spent a lot of time on that one. Jimmy Pham, Michael Gallardo has recently gotten his license. Um, but I, I could add all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different. I'm going to clear the filter just so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to put in um, like, how about one of these? Uh, and uh, 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 an agent, whoever that is. So I, I could be sending this to a group of people. I'm sending it to myself. Why don't I pick a real group that I want to send it to? So I'm going to go down here to people that are registered in my real estate school. And uh, for some reason that didn't pop up. Let me do this one more time. So I, I'm doing this just to show you how, how, how to make mistakes. So you click on this. You click on tab, click on tab, and then that pops up. I have 167 people in my school right now. I click on add all eligible contacts, save and continue, and I click on send now. And I've just sent 160 people in a beautiful email, and it's going to take a couple of minutes, right? It's going to take a couple of minutes. 
because, you know, it just does. So other things that we could do with the mobile app. Is, is there any, are we having fun yet? We've, we've talked about where to find your mobile app. And so now you have your mobile app on the phone. You ought to practice sharing it with people. So let me give you an idea. Let's say I'm old school. Even Jerry's not old enough for this. Old school, we would do an open house and you'd print out all the homes that were in the neighborhood that all the homes that were in the neighborhood. You'd print them up. And then when somebody comes into the open house, you would say, well, you know, did you understand most people do not buy the house at the open house? Right. According to the National Association of Realtors, surveys of buyers and sellers, they asked buyers, how did you find the house you bought? You know what percentage of them said, I found it at the open house? 1%. Right? So if you're at an open house with the idea, I'm going to sell this house. Right? And so you want to explain that there are shelves under the stairs, right? You know, that, oh, that's always a, you know, did you know the owners put shelves under the stairs, right? You want to buy this house. You're, you're probably not going to end up, it doesn't work. So they probably don't like that house. Isn't that right? Those people that don't house, they don't like that house. So when it, when in the old days, we used to say, well, here's a list of all the homes in the neighborhood. You can go drive around and look at them, and if you see one you like, mark it, and I'll meet me here at 4 o'clock, and I'll, I'll mark the ones you want to see the insides of. Now, with a mobile app, is that better than giving them a printout of, of homes? So one of the things you can do at an open house, if somebody comes in, you could say, you know, uh, we're trying to kill fewer trees. Do you, do you like to kill trees? Are you a tree killer? Like, <laughs> you know, do you enjoy tree killing? Um, and so I actually have a digital flyer for the house. Does that sound good? You can take it with you on your cell phone. It's a digital flyer. It's got all the pictures, all the information about it. Isn't that cool? Would you rather have that than a, you know, the, this, the paper flyers are so 1980s, aren't they? Right before you were born. Isn't that right? Before you were born. So how so a digital flyer? Are there some people that would be interested in a digital flyer? Cool. You take your phone. You go to your mobile app. There's a button that says share. You tap on it. You say, all right, cool. I'm going to send it to your phone. What's your what's your phone number? They give you the phone number. You type it in and you hit send, and it sends them a link to the download page for your mobile app. And because it's GPS based, the house they're standing in is the one that's going to pull up. Okay? And they can save them and they can keep notes and they can actually even add pictures. And as they drive around, you your branded app is being driven with them. By the way, what also have you accomplished that's oftentimes very difficult to do at an open house? You've gotten their phone number. You've gotten their phone number. You know, how do you find the phone number? It's in your outgoing messages. On your, <laughs> I've had people say, oh, where's the phone number? I can't find the phone number. And I said, give me your phone, right? Where's your, type SMS, type, hit that, look at the ones you've sent. There, there's their phone number. Is that, is that, so you ought to, I believe you ought to get in the habit of sharing the app. Now, I've heard people say, well, you have HomeSnap. We have the HomeSnap lady here. Their app is not good for consumers. HomeSnap is a mobile app that comes with the MLS. Their app is not good for consumers. I'm just telling you, it's not made. It's good for real estate agents to have, but it's not good for consumers. This app can compete with Redfin's app. This app actually could, it's better than Zillow or Trulia's app because based upon the GPS system, first of all, the app is connected more directly to our multiple listing service and it updates more often than Zillow and Trulia, plus the GPS system is far more accurate. All right. All right. Was that enough about the mobile app? Anybody have any questions? Let's see if any of our people online, how many people have stayed with us? Most of you have. Any questions? Anything? No? That's great. Was that great? All right. That's it then. I'm done. Next, uh, tomorrow we're doing a class on converting seller leads at 1 o'clock. Next week I'm doing something else about technology. I don't remember what it is.
Right. But I'll, I'll do something.